Sasha, what do you think made the difference in the end today? Uh, I feel like I played the best tennis in the tiebreak of the fifth set. I think that that was uh, extremely important. I mean, I was obviously for a lot of parts of the match not feeling great on the court. I was not hitting the ball as as well as I was maybe the previous round and the previous match. But um, yeah, I got the win in the end and I'm in the quarterfinals, which I'm very happy about. English questions? I just finished the, the match with Alcaraz and he mentioned that he thinks he has, he has an advantage of you because he has played less sets. 100 percent. That, that's the question? Yeah. Yeah, How do you for feel sure. About it? Do you feel yeah, like for is, sure. Is, uh, that, is that going to bring his advantage? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, if you if you play less, uh, you are fresher. But um, I feel I feel OK. You know, I'm not like the US Open where I was completely dead um, and where I feel like, um, you know, I'm, I'm physically exhausted. Uh, I'm tired for sure because I, I played seven, six in the fifth set again. <laughs> You know, two times out of the last three matches, but um, I'm not. I'm not dead. I'm not. Uh, you know, completely um, exhausted. I'm not in the same physical state I was in the U.S. Open. So I expect it to be very different, to be honest. Your fuel in the tank. Yes, 100 percent. And I also think that um, you know, coming out on Rod Laver Arena. It, 7 p.m. You know, for a quarterfinal match against the number two player in the world, that gives you energy as well. And I think, um, I hope it's going to be a very fun, entertaining match. Of course. Can you uh, talk to us a bit about the ups and downs of this match? How you went into it and how your mentality maybe changed a little bit at the end as well? Yeah, I mean, I was I was in control in the beginning, obviously being a set and break up um, and lost focus, and then he also started playing a lot better, but. Um, it was kind of in my hands, um, but then yeah, I mean, I think when when the sun went down and the sh you know the court was in full shade, um, we both you know played a lot better. Um, I think the, the fifth set was probably the best set uh, that we played. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm I'm just happy that I won, you know, um, because it was a very tight and very close match. Um, could have gone both ways, obviously, with it being seven six in the fifth set, but. Um, you know, I'm, I'm through and I'm happy about that. John? The disruption in the third set when the when yeah. the pamphlets got thrown out there, did, were you aware of that on court or was some, did somebody tell you what happened later? No, I mean, I saw it. Um, I don't know what it was about. I heard that uh, same thing happened in JCA or Kia Arena or something like that, right? So it was not, we were not the only court. So I don't know what what was about. Pro, what Pro-Palestinian. Pro-Palestinian. Yeah, um, there's obviously a lot going on in the world um, and a lot of, uh, you know, quite bad things happen. So um, I understand some people are frustrated, um, but of course, you know, a tennis match has nothing particularly to do with it. Um, but I, I also understand uh, both, both sides there. Thanks. Were you surprised? I think two fans ended up Dragging yeah. Out. We, the security didn't seem really to be around. I was yeah, they, they, that was a bit surprising because the security here, I mean, on site where the players' area is, is extremely strict. Um, you know, you, even today, you know, I played obviously five sets, uh, four hours, some minutes. I went through the locker room and then the gym area is right next to the locker room. And they wouldn't let me into the gym because I forgot my credential in the locker room. You know, stuff like this, where it's like, okay, what are you doing? You're protecting players from players. It's not really the whole point. But then something like this happens, and it takes whatever, three, four minutes for somebody to show up. So I think that that, that should be the opposite. It should be, you know, where, where it's already the quarterfinals, and you know the players. And if, especially if you, you know, there's obviously screens and TVs everywhere in front of, you know, all the security guys. If you've seen somebody play for four and a half hours, I think it's okay to go stretching in the gym, even if you forgot your credential. Um, and that's not sounding arrogant. I understand that that uh, they're they're all doing their job. But then, I think you know when something like this happens, it shouldn't be another fan dragging the other person out. You know, it should be 
uh, the security guys that they should be there quite quickly um, and not it shouldn't take them three four minutes and um, that long can I ask you why you wanted to join the Players Council and if there are any issue, particular issues that you were focused on that are important to you? I mean, I actually got asked to do it. Um, obviously, I didn't nominate myself. Um, I, I got asked to do it, so then, like, okay, do you want to be nominated? I was like, okay, sure. Obviously, the players voted, uh, so the players voted me in. Um, but I think... You know, there, there, there are right now uh, at this stage, um, as you probably heard with um, a lot of the discussions about a lot of other things, uh, there are decisions that, that have to be seriously considered and seriously made. Um, and I think we have a great group of guys uh, in there who are capable of discussing it, who are capable of talking about it. Um, I think there, there are some issues that us with the ATP, we really kind of want to focus on. Um, you know, some some of them are, for example, the Davis Cup format. Then uh, other things are obviously the schedule of of our tournaments. I think playing for eleven and a half months or eleven months a year is too much, in, in my opinion. Um, you know, widening the the, the schedule. I think uh, having more five hundred events, having maybe more masses events. It's also it, it's great opportunity for players, obviously, but then I think also it is maybe getting a bit out of hand and a bit too much as well. So there's just all of those discussions, but it, it, they're very nice discussions, you know, that nobody's fighting in there, nobody's uh, screaming or shouting. It's just, you know, we're all there trying to achieve the same thing and to have a better tour. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be part of it. Last one, Andrew. To ask you about Cam, obviously uh, you mentioned the other day yeah. that you trained with him in Monte Carlo. Um, what did you make of his performance? It was for having watched Cam a lot over the last few years. It was a bit like the rude one, very aggressive. Yeah. Um, do you think that's the game style he should play with going forward? It'll maybe move him further up the ranking. Well, if he can, for sure. Um, if he can play this way, then for sure it's going to make him imp improve and make him better. Incredibly aggressive, I thought, uh, taking the ball very early. He he usually does that with his backhand, not so much with his forehand. And today he did that with his forehand. And I thought his, you know, for the first time that since I've been playing him, for the first time I thought his forehand was better than his backhand, which was very unusual. You know, normally he, he gives you a few more unforced errors. He He's not as stable. I thought he was very stable today and I thought he was very aggressive with that shot. So credits to him. I think they had a great offseason and he, he has improved a lot. Thank <laughs> you.